Hey, happy Monday to you. We are live a little bit late today because do you ever have one of those Mondays where it just falls apart, right? <laughs> I have had one of those Mondays. It's just completely unraveled in a way that I did not expect it to. So here we are. We're live and we're late, but we're still on here Monday. So last week, if you were with us, Okay, we talked about this concept that was so beautiful out of Matthew 18, 19. And it says, where two or more are gathered in agreement, there I am in their midst, okay? That word for agree is actually an amazing word called symphono. And symphono is where we get our English word symphony, okay? So symphono, symphony. So when we gather in agreement or symphono, symphony, we actually produce, <laughs> Greg, I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove it in just a minute. Matthew 18, 19, the symphono in agreement produces a symphony or a harmony in one accord. And it says, whatever you ask for, I'll grant it. And so that's an awesome key. So where we're going to go today is Philippians 2. And I love Philippians 2 for this reason. You know, you have those go-to passages that like when you're just really needing that boost of encouragement, like that shot, you know, where you feel disheartened or you feel defeat, defeated or disappointed or discouraged, all the, the DIS words, right? Um, you, you have to have those go-tos, whether it's Proverbs or Psalms or whatever, well, Philippians 2 is actually one of those passages for me. It's always been one of those passages. But what I love about Philippians 2 in the very beginning is it starts with all of these conditional clauses. Okay, so who remembers from English school what conditional clauses are? Okay, just in case you don't, conditional clauses are often presented as if-then statements. If this happens, then this will happen. So if I throw a ball up in the air, then gravity will bring it down, right? That's a conditional clause. That's an if-then statement. And so interestingly, Paul brings all these if-then statements to Philippians 2. And here's what he says. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, 2. If any comfort from his love, 3. If any fellowship with the Spirit, for if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete. Okay, so there we got the if-then statements. How will we make his joy complete? Well, this is what he says. Being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. What I find so intriguing about this passage is I believe that this is one of the greatest unity formulas there are. So we will have the same love, be one in spirit and, and purpose, and be like-minded if we do these things. Okay, so what are the things that we have to do? Well, listen up. Encouragement from being united with Christ. If we're united with Christ, that'll bring unity to, our, to each other, right? Any fellowship with the Spirit any tenderness and compassion. So those are the if things. If we possess those things and do those things, then these things will happen. What I want to share is this really cool Greek word, okay? The Bible wasn't written in English. We know that. But where it says, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit. Okay, so do you know what the Greek word for spirit is? It's sim psycho. Yes, psycho is in the Bible, sim psycho. And psycho really means spirit. It can often return, uh, refer to mind like psychology. So it's the root of all of those things. But it's really cool because sim psycho means same spirit or mind. Okay, so if we individually do these things, if we're united with Christ, if we find comfort in his love, if we find fellowship with the spirit, 
if we possess tender, tenderness and compassion, then we will be one in spirit, which is sim psychos. Psycho. Isn't that crazy? This is the only place in the entire Bible that this Greek word is used, sim psycho, and it means same mind or same spirit. And so, interestingly, when we all possess the Holy Spirit, we're literally co-spirits together, right? So this concept can be found when we say there's no distance in the spirit. So how can someone across the nation be so much on my heart and I start praying for them and interceding for them and things shift for them in a mighty way? Well, we're not together physically, but we're co-spirits. And so you hear the word co-laboring, right? But as co-spirits, when we're one in spirit, it will produce the same purpose, right? Because the Holy Spirit speaks the same thing to me as he does to you, as he does someone in California and Michigan and Connecticut, all of these things. And we can co-labor in Christ when we're co-spirited, meaning we have the same spirit. I believe, friends, that is such a crucial factor in unity. And why do I bring that up? Because there's this thing called false unity where other spirits connect also, right? But that is not Holy Spirit unity. We have to have Holy Spirit unity, co-spirits to co-labor. It is only then that as we're like-minded, we have the same love and we're one in spirit and purpose that we will find true unity. And if you remember from last week, this is the big tie-in, but if you remember last week, we talked about the word symphono. When we come together as one spirit, some psychos, we, same spirit, we produce a sound in agreement, which is actually symphono or symphony. And it's in that sound that Matthew says, whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will have been loosed in heaven. What's he talking about? He's talking about the power and authority of the church. What you bind on earth will have already been bound in heaven. What you loose on earth will have already been loosed in heaven. So as I hear from heaven to earth and I exit my mouth, I literally bind and loose what's already been bound and loose in heaven. However, that happens when two or three come into agreement because a symphony is made. Isn't that amazing? So some psychos is like spirits. Symphono is the same sound or agreement or harmony. So I challenge you today, if you're struggling to find unity in your community, whatever that looks like for you, I really challenge you to individually push toward being united with Christ, finding comfort in his love, finding fellowship with the spirit, finding tenderness and compassion. Make sense? Awesome. I hope you have a great Monday and I love you guys. We are cheering you on so, so loud here at Enkindle. We have some really awesome things coming up this next month. You're going to be hearing more about those, but we cheer you on. We love you. We bless you to radically transform our nation with his presence, one community at a time, whatever that community looks like for you. We'll see you soon.